Hey there, this is Mike Moore. This tutorial is going to cover how to take a mesh that you've made in Blender or Maya or really anything, but I'm focusing on Blender because it's free, and convert that mesh into a Fallout 4 compatible format, allowing you to put it into the game, and it's going to be quick, straightforward, and have minimal rambling, so let's get into it. I'm going to go over a few quick things before we get started. If you don't want to deal with it, just skip a few seconds forwards, it won't take long. First off, you're going to need these three programs. Something to make 3D models, preferably Blender, so you're not spending a whole bunch of money on 3ds Max. Body Slider Outfit Studio, and Nifscope 2.0. And I guess there's a fourth, Creation Kit or Fallout 4 edit. You don't need to use a specific one of these, but Creation Kit is probably a little bit more user-friendly for new people, which is saying something. Now, I'm not going to show you how to download these things, because I don't want to waste four minutes talking about something like that. You should be able to figure it out fairly easy. There are links in the Australian part of the video page, if you just zoom out. And scroll down and look around here, you're gonna see links for the things you need. Please, just like, just click them. You'll be okay. Alright, so let's get started. You've got your 3D model, whatever it is. I'm gonna use this chunk of the AEAR I recently released, since it's the most fresh in my mind. This model should be saved as an OBJ, and you have to triangulate it so it has only triangles as faces. You can press Ctrl T to do this, or you can go into the export section in Blender when you're exporting your mesh to an OBJ. And you can hit this checkbox down here, and that will also triangulate the mesh. So there's there's no five-sided shapes or anything like that. Everything is a triangle, so it works really good with the Fallout 4 format. Good, so you've got your mesh saved as an OBJ. Now open it up in Outfit Studio. This is the program we're going to be using to convert the OBJ to a NIF, so Fallout can read it. Click the Outfit Studio button down at the bottom here, and this new window will pop up. Move your mouse up to Shape and make sure Smooth Seam Normals is unchecked. If it isn't, your shape will have no hard edges. It'll merge all the vertices that are in the same place, so it'll make any hard edges look kind of soft. So for example, instead of looking like this, which it should look like, it'll look more like this, and it kind of makes it look like uh, it's made of clay, so that's pretty ugly. Anyway, now that you've got this set up, find your OBJ wherever it is and open it up in another file window beside Outfit Studio and drag in the mesh from the file folder into Outfit Studio. Don't bother going to File Open because chances are you've got four or five different meshes that you're going to need to convert and dragging them in is faster. Keep in mind, you're going to have to uncheck Smooth Seam Normals every single time you drag a shape into here because it resets for some reason. Alright, so you've got your mesh in here, go to File, hit Export, and you're going to get a warning about vertexes not having any weighting assigned to them. Don't worry about it, it's not your problem, it's something to do with clothing, so just hit Yes. Pick a name and hit Save, and your mesh should turn a darker color like this. Now if you're noticing your mesh has some like invisible faces or something like that, it's either because you've got faces that were not triangulated, because you didn't listen to me in the beginning of the tutorial, or you've got faces that are backwards in your model. Go check on the faces in Blender or whatever program you're using, and if you notice that they have this weird discolored face where it looks kind of like the opposite color of the other faces, click on it and hit W, and you should see a Flip Normals button in Blender. Just click that and it should flip the shape around, and that should fix the invisible faces when you're converting to an F. Cool, so you've got your NIF now. If you want to convert another one, you'll have to close the Outfit Studio box and then open it back up again in Body Slide. Since it will have your old mesh in the window and you don't want to like overwrite your current mesh with the old one as well, and it gets messy, so just, just close it and reopen it. Once you've got all your OBJs finished up, go ahead and close Body Slide. You don't need it anymore. Next, we're going to want to find a mesh that serves the same purpose as the one you're putting in the game. That sentence probably doesn't make a lot of sense on its own, so I'll try to explain it a little better. I've got the receiver for my AEAR that I've converted into a NIF, right? You can see if you open up what you've just converted, it will look really, really messy on the left-hand side. A whole bunch of random shit over there, because Body Slide is a clothing program, and it wants you to have bone merges and bone binding and all that kind of stuff that's specific to clothing, not weapons. But anyway, since I have a gun receiver, you're going to want to find another gun receiver to put yours into and use kind of as a template. The Plasma Rifle has a NIF called Plasma Receiver 1.NIF in its folder. If you don't already have all the Fallout 4 meshes extracted, you'll need Bethesda Archive Extractor. I'm not going to show you how to download it or use it because it's pretty straightforward. I'll just, I'll put a link in the Australian part of the video. You can go and look at the instructions on the mod page. Moving on, open up Plasma Receiver 1.NIF. You'll notice that this NIF's block list is significantly more organized than the one we just converted. 
What you're going to want to do is have both NIFScope windows open on the screen at the same time. So click the new one you've just converted and the default plasma receiver NIF and just kind of like put them both on your screen at the same time. Click the shape in your new NIF that you want to use so it's all green and wiry. Then right click on it, click block, and then hit copy. Go over to your plasma receiver NIF, right click on 09 node at the top here, and hit block, then click paste. Boom. Now you've got this really ugly ass mesh in here that really needs to be sized down so it looks like it's in the same position as the existing receiver in the plasma gun mesh. If you want to change the shape and position of the mesh you have here, right click on the mesh, hit transform, then hit edit, and you'll see this edit window pop up and you can adjust everything down to what you want it to be. Those numbers will obviously all be different for you because you've got a different mesh than I do. So just fiddle with it until you get what you want. Also, we don't need this old NIF window open anymore because you've got what you want from it. So go ahead and close that. So I'm going to start changing the position of my mesh here. Cool, so now you've got your mesh where you want it. Now for the boring stuff. The first thing you're going to want to do is change the name of the mesh from whatever it is now to something that makes sense so you can keep your shape organized. So go into your try shape, click down here on the little TXT icon, and this window will come up. Don't bother searching for something in here, just type in the name you want and hit enter. Cool, that's done. Next, go down to skin, and there's something left over in this field from body slide thinking it's a piece of clothing, so just double click that, hit backspace, hit enter, and it should go to none. Next, go to BS properties and expand it. There's something left over in here as well from body slide, but this is actually where you want to put the file path for your BGSM file. I'll not be covering the BGSM files in here because you should be able to figure that out pretty easily by yourself, but if you want to grab the BGSM file editor that I use, I'll again put links in the bottom section of the video. For the purposes of this tutorial, we're going to be using the Plasma Rifle Receiver BGSM, which will look like garbage because it's not arranged at all for your mesh, I'm assuming. So go ahead and open up the leftover plasma receiver and go to the BS Lighting Shader property and click on it. You'll see at the top there's a path for the receiver to BGSM. If you click on the TXT icon like we did for the first name of the mesh, you can change the path to whatever you want. We're not going to do this, but this is just for future reference when you do want to change the BGSM path. What we're going to do right now though is right click on BS Lighting Shader property, hit block, and then hit copy branch this time, not just copy, because we want to take the whole thing. Now go back to your receiver's BS sub-index try shape, scroll down to BS properties, hit expand, right click on it here. After you've right clicked, go to block, and then hit paste branch. Now you're almost done with NIF scope, the last thing you're going to want to do is customize the bounding sphere. So go up to that field, and this sphere should cover the mesh you have roughly. So you'll notice if I scale this up to 10 here, and click on the bounding sphere's field, you can see this wireframe in the render window showing you the sphere, where it is and what it covers. So, so like we did before, just diddle around with the scaling and the position, don't worry about the rotation because it's a sphere, it doesn't matter. And you can get it to cover up the mesh that you just put in. So we're going to speed things up and I'll be right back when everything's done. Cool, so now that's done. Don't worry if it's a tiny bit too big or too small, it, it doesn't have to be exact, just as long as it roughly covers the item. Unless you want to worry about it, you can, if you want, it's your call. The last thing you're going to want to do is delete the old plasma receiver mesh. Because you don't want it showing up in your new mesh, right click on the receiver, hit block, and then hit delete branch. Keep in mind that even though you copied your BS lighting shader property from earlier into your new mesh, it's not the same one. So deleting the old one will keep the new one, and it just deletes the leftover one. To expand on that, if you for some reason change the path in your BS properties, to be the exact same number as the old one, it will crash your game because you have a duplicate BS properties path. You don't want to reuse BS lighting shader properties or anything else actually. Any kind of duplicate causes the game to crash. Make sure you take a new copy instead of using the same one twice. Holy fuck, this is going on for a long time. Alright, last part. Open up creation kit. Load up fallout4.esp in creation kit. Don't set an active file because you're going to be starting a new one fresh. You'll find the plasma rifle, which should be under plasma gun. Double click that and hit the art and sound tab. Now you notice in this model field here it says weapon slash plasma slash dummy receiver dot nif. The way fallout weapons usually work is the actual weapon is just a dummy, it's just like a blank slate. And all of the actual things you see in game are mods that are attached onto that blank slate. So the, the grip the barrel, the receiver, everything like that. 
Normally you'd want to edit the receiver mod, which in this case is called mod underscore plasma gun underscore plasma receiver. So if you want to do that, you can. But in this case, we're focusing on getting the weapon into the game, and that's it. Now I could change the default plasma gun, but what I want to do is make a new weapon. So close out of this, click the plasma gun slowly twice so you get the option to change the name, and type in whatever you want the name to be. Hit enter, and then you want to hit yes on this button that asks you if you want to make a new object. Now you've got a brand new weapon, and that's the one you want to change the model in. So fly over to your new mod by searching the name you just typed in, open it up, hit the edit button next to the model path, hit the edit button again, and you'll be able to select your mesh from this file browser. Also, you're probably going to want to change the name in the weapon as well, because you won't be able to find it in-game if you don't. The one that shows up in-game when you search it in the console is the one in the name field, whereas the ID one here is the one that only shows up in Creation Kit. Change both because you want to be consistent, but make sure the name is unique enough that you'll be able to find it when you use the help command. Cool, so this is all done. Your model is in the game. Let's boot up the game and see what happens. And here we are! It's ugly as hell because it's got a bunch of random plasma gun parts on it, but uh, that's just because I didn't change the mods that were attached to it. And uh, all is well, you're done. That is the bare minimum of getting a mesh into the game. If I started getting into actually putting a gun together and getting onto the meshes to where they should be and getting it an animated and modifiable and all that trash, this video would be like 30 minutes long. So if I get enough people asking, I'll make that, but for now, this should hold you guys over, you'll be able to get things into the game, and you'll be able to do what you want with your meshes. I know as well as anyone that tutorials for Fallout 4 modding are atrocious. You guys may forget this, but this is the first game I've modded, and I started when the game came out. So I learned this all through trial and error, because there was no Fallout 4 tutorials. And it was hell. Like, actually hell. I'd wake up in the morning and just start dicking around with Nifscope until I was too tired to go on, then I'd go to sleep, and then I'd do it all over again the next day, and sometimes I'd go to Applebee's and make food for people in between. <sighs> anyway, the modding community is pretty dry right now, and I, I don't know if that's because the initial mods that got released for Fallout 4 were so popular because everybody was so hyped about it that the newer mods just aren't getting enough attention for them to show up for people just browsing around for mods, or because people just aren't making mods. I'm assuming it's not that, because people are still making mods. But anyway, hopefully you guys make a difference and you start making kick-ass mods to help the entire situation out. If you have some random little questions or queries, go ahead and leave comments in the YouTube video or join my Discord chat. I'll leave a link to that somewhere in the Australian area, and to combat mods not getting a lot of attention, please go on Reddit and subscribe to r slash follow mods. It's a good subreddit, and I use it all the time. Modders usually go there to ask questions and promote their new releases. The more traffic, the better, as always. Also, the Nexus is supposed to be getting a revamp, but it was supposed to be getting a revamp like a year ago, so God knows when that's gonna happen, so we wait. Anyway, I'll stop rambling. Things are all done. Thanks for tuning in and sticking around this long. I really appreciate it. I want you guys to have an extraordinarily fantastic week. I'll be seeing you soon. Now get out there and make some shit. Later days. Come on!